Hey guys, what's up? So at AMD January Tech Summit, they talked a lot about improvements and changes they've made to the AMD GPU, and I wanted to kind of go through those uh, as they listed them in the in the live stream because behind all the somewhat scary technical terms, there's some really cool stuff going on. So right off the bat, AMD acknowledged the increasing size and complexity of games uh, and the expected increase in DX12 and Vulkan implementation in those games. And they said they want they had really focused a lot on that aspect of gaming when they approached the design of Vega. They also wanted to reach the modeling and special effects market in film and the professional compute market as well. So their general goal when, when designing Vega was to create a powerful and versatile GPU that not only worked harder but also smarter than previous versions of, or their competition. And it's, it's kind of a vague goal, but it looks like they're working very hard to follow through. So the very first thing that we learned about Vega was that it would feature HBM2, high bandwidth memory, second generation. Now HBM is sort of the flip side to GDDR5 where HBM has a low clock speed, a low frequency, and high bandwidth, as you might have guessed from the title, and GDDR5 has a high frequency and a low bandwidth. Compared to GDDR5, HBM is five times more power efficient and takes up half the physical space on the chip. Now that reduced power draw and size means that integrating into laptops is going to be a much simpler uh, process than with previous cards. So HBM2, as I said, is second generation high bandwidth memory. Now HBM1 topped out at one gigabyte maximum per stack, which left us up to four stacks on a chip, so that was only a maximum of four gigabytes per card, which is not very much, uh, especially now with you know 6, 12 being a pretty common number. Uh, and so HBM2 goes all the way up to 8, 8 gigabytes per stack, which means we could have up to 32 gigabytes on a single card. I really doubt that's going to happen, but that is just the fact that it's possible. It's, it's crazy. It's mind-boggling. Now, the thing, the sector that controls or manages uh, the VRAM high bandwidth memory is the high bandwidth cache controller. And the high bandwidth cache controller promises scalable memory and more intelligent memory allocation. That first point refers to the card's ability to access all of the storage on the system and treat it as sort of as one large memory bank. I think this is so that the graphics card can perform its operations directly on the data itself without having to copy it from storage or system memory into VRAM first, which ends up saving a lot of time. Uh, this is just sort of an educated guess though, so if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments. The second part, referring to the intelligent memory allocation, uh, refers to sort of a problem that previous graphics cards have had, where they allocate, well, AMD showed this slide, they, they showed this right here, where you see Witcher 3 and Fallout 4, that the system allocated twice as much memory as was actually used by the game. So AMD's goal with Vega is to bring that gold bar closer to the purple bar, and in doing so, freeing up quite a bit of space in memory for other applications to use that. And they're claiming that with this new system of memory allocation that a two gigabyte card will perform equivalent to a four gigabyte card of the previous generations and uh, archetypes of graphics cards. Vega also boasts its next generation compute unit or NCU. I don't know what they did with the G, but they just, I guess they forgot it. Um, it's really just a stream processor. It's a new way that they're making their stream processor. And the stream processor is um, the AMD equivalent to an NVIDIA CUDA core. The Vega NCU has increased clock speed and instructions per clock over their previous compute unit, and either one of those would be good news. Either one of those would mean increased performance, but both in tandem is just awesome. It also offers scalable precision in operations. That's 512 8-bit, 256 16-bit, and 128 32-bit operations per clock, and it's able to switch between these modes on the fly. Those Numbers don't really mean much to a lot of you, but what it means is it's able to do a lot of simple or low uh, precision operations or a few, a lower number of higher precision or more complex operations in the same amount of time. And being able to switch between those means that it's more versatile and it's more um, efficient with its resources. So if it's doing a certain type of job that requires more precision, it's going to switch to the high precision low operations, and if it's doing something that can be more relaxed on the precision, it can do low precision, high operations, and do that one much more quickly. Rapid packed math is another thing that they had talked, that, 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 
Rapid pack na math that ah. rapid packed math is sort of what it sounds like. It's rapidly packing math operations together and sending them all through a single stream processor or NCU. And so what this means is previous NCUs or previous compute units or stream processors, whatever you want to call them, could handle individual 32-bit operations or individual 16-bit operations with the new new compute unit or the next generation compute, compute unit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, all these names are getting confusing, whatever. With the new one, you can do a single 32 or 216 or 48 bit and send that single 32 or 216 or 48 bit operations all through at the same time. Where previously you could only do 132 or 116, like I just said, this is seriously improving the throughput of a single compute unit. And with however many of those we have on the Vega cards, that's really, really impressive. It's also helping with um, processes like they gave the example of rendering hair strands on a 3D model and it more than doubled the speed at which strands could be rendered. Now this isn't expected to have much of or any impact on gaming whatsoever but for those outside of gaming do, who do 3D modeling or special effects or whatever compute workloads actually are going to benefit very much from this. So this is one of those things that <clears throat> that AMD Radeon really wanted to focus on because they don't want it they don't want Vega just to be a gaming GPU. They want it to be awesome at gaming, but they also want it to be attractive to, to the other people who also need graphics cards for their workflow. Now let's talk about the draw stream binning rasterizer. That's kind of a mouthful, but the first three words are just qualifiers. A rasterizer converts a vector image into a pixel image. Now Linus did a good tech quickie video on vector graphics that you should check out if you're curious. Um, if you haven't seen it already, it's, it's just cool information, so go check that out. The drawstream binning rasterizer bins polygons by tile, which means it renders an image one, one square at a time. And because the attention of the graphics card is focused on an individual tile, it's allowed to more efficiently shade each pixel. It also culls or removes hidden pixels, which means if a pixel won't be seen in the final image or if it overlaps another pixel that is the same exact image, it, it won't do it. It'll just throw it out and use that energy to do something else. Lastly, we have the new programmable geometry pipeline, which is the thing that handles all the geometry, as you may have guessed. It uses primitive shaders to get rid of all the unnecessary or hidden polygons that won't be seen in the final render. Getting rid of them before rendering significantly cuts down on the work that the graphics card has to do. This is reminiscent of Umbra's occlusion cooling. Occlusion cooling restricted the render to things that would be actually seen by the camera in the final render, much like Vega promises to do but occlusion cooling was game specific and it looks like Vega will be doing this with every single game that you run on it. So that's all that was on my list. If I miss something, let me know in the comments. I'll try to get you an answer. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something. If you liked the video, give it a like. If not, uh, do as you like. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out and I will see you in the next video.